Before we start exploring Quasar's expansion item, I'm going to remove these classes and add in padding just so that it shows at the top here. I feel like that makes a little bit more sense in this video. Now you're probably gonna to wanna to use your expansion item inside of a list. So let's say Q dash list, Q dash expansion item, expansion dash item. And that's about it. We can add a card in there directly, whatever content you want, Q dash card dash section. So we get a bit of padding. And then I'm just gonna add some lorem ipsum in there. Tab, there it is, save it. There's our expansion item, cool. Now let's set a maximum width on this because usually it's going to be contained a little bit more. So just to be more realistic here, we can say max dash width is equal to 350 pixels. All right, we're ready to start playing around. First, we might wanna have the list bordered when we're using expansion items, just so that we can see this a little bit more clearly. And now let's add a label to it. And I'll set that equal to my name. There we go. We can also add an icon in. So icon is equal to person because I am a person and that worked. We can also add a caption as well. So for example, my email, luke at quasarcast.com. Dot <laughs> com. Looking pretty good. So this could be like an info section. Maybe you've got a whole bunch of people that are going to show up. Uh, we've got Quasar Conf just around the corner. So you could have like a Quasar Conf website that shows you who is going to be a part of Quasar Conf, and then that gives you some more information about their talk, just as an example. Now, to show you the next example, I'm going to add a Q-item, just a normal Q-item. By the way, once again, a Q-expansion item is a Q-item with a little bit of sugar on top, which gives us those extra effects. So let's say Q-item, Q-item-section, and we'll set this equal to my girlfriend's name. Shannon? Higginson, that is the girl in whom I adore. And now I can come up here and add in here, expand separator. And this basically means that when I expand this, we get that little line at the bottom, that separator. If I didn't have expand separator, notice that it doesn't show up anymore. So it just creates a bit of extra separation when you do expand one of the things in the list. So that can be really good to know. We can also change the classes for this header. So let's come in here and say header-class is equal to, maybe set the text to red. And there we go. Notice that it hasn't actually changed everything there. I'll show you later on how you can actually hook into this slot to change it to your heart's extent. So there we go. We can add a header class. We can also disable it. Disable, save it. And now it's not gonna let me click on this. So that could be helpful if you've got a website that. I don't know, maybe has spoilers on it, like a movie website, and you don't want the user to be able to click on it unless they've seen the entire post. I don't know, just as an example, or if they've marked something to say that they've seen the movie. That could be a good example of where you want to use disable. We can also actually model this, V dash model, and let's set that to expand it. And now I can come up here and say Q dash button, and then at click, we'll say expanded, is equal to the opposite of what expanded currently is. So basically this is just gonna to toggle that. And we'll say toggle expanded for this button. All right, now we actually need that piece of data. So let's come down here, yank out ref, and then we can say set up, hello composition API, and then return an object here that is our expanded. And now let's say const expanded is equal to a reference to false. So by default, it will not be expanded. Now, when I click on this, it expands. So that's just a way that we can change whether or not it's expanded from the outside world, from outside of the component. Pretty cool, but I can get rid of that now to bring us to a simpler example. There we go. We can also make this a little bit more dense and that's probably gonna make more sense if I get rid of the caption here. Yeah, so if I add in here dense, it's just gonna make it denser, of course. And we've actually also got dense dash toggle. So notice that the toggle is that icon, but the toggle for dense is actually supposed to be something slightly different. So we've got that dense toggle as well. Thank you Quasar for making this a joy to use. We can also say switch toggle side, and this is gonna throw that toggle onto the other side. So let's save that. And now it's on the other side. What else can we do? Well, like I said before, we can actually hook into the header. So we put a template in here, and then we say header, 
and then just say content to check if that's working. And there we go. Now, you want your header to use list item components, all right? So notice in item here, we're using the queue item section. Since your expansion item is a queue item, you want to use queue item section inside of there in order for it to display properly. I'll show you what I mean. Q-item-section, and now let's set the label there equal to Luke Diebold. Actually, I don't think it has a label property. Oh, my bad. So let's yank that out and just throw it directly in there. Luke Diebold. And we get the same thing. But now you can say, for example, Q avatar and just throw whatever components you want in here. You get the idea. Yeah, and in this case, you'd actually throw that in its own Q-item-section and you'd add on here side so that it knows it's a side item. And there we go. Everything is displaying nicely again. Another thing we can do is group all of these. So if I come up here and say the group is equal to one, and I'll show you what grouping does in a second, Let's just spit out more of these by saying v-4 i in 15. So we'll spit out 15 of these, and that means we'll need a key equal to i. There we go. Now, since these are all in group 1, that's saying that only items that are in group 1, only one of those can show at the same time. So maybe I should change this to my group, just for clarity's sake. Anything that is in my group, only one of those can show at a time. So this one shows, but if I click on another one, then it changes. So we can only display one at a time within a group. If I get rid of this grouping, I can now show as many as I want. And as you can imagine, this could get pretty unwieldy. So the group can be particularly helpful. Keeps your users a bit more focused, which is nice. We can also say default opened in this scenario. And that means that this item is going to be open by default. However, since we're iterating over these, this isn't really going to make sense because they can't all be open by default if only one can be open at the same time. So what I'll do is set this to i being equal to 5. So if the index of the item we're currently on is equal to 5, I want it to have default open set. So let's save it. And there we go. If I refresh the page, once again, number 5 will open by default. And if I set this to 10, number 10 will open by default. That's good to know. And the last thing I want to show you is a really cool extra little feature that we get for free, which is the pop-up feature. So if I do that, it's going to mess with the styling a little bit here. And that's because it needs space so that when I click on one of these, it basically pops out. See how it kind of pops out like that? It's a really nice effect. But in order to fix the styling here, we probably want to get rid of this border around the list. So let's get rid of bordered, save it. And there we go. Now we can select these one at a time. And I think that looks really good. Nice. So that is the Quasar Expansion Item Component. Hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.